It's time for another future intervention. This is Joshua to let you know that this is part two of our Wonka slash Willy Wonka slash Charlie and the Chocolate Factory review. So if you want to hear our, our discussion about Wonka, check out part one. But if you're here to listen to our battle royale between Johnny Depp and Gene Wilder, stay tuned because that may or may not be coming. Uh, spoilers, it isn't coming, but other things are. Enjoy. Wow, wow, wow. That sure was uh, a great uh, review, I guess. I tried to think of a Wonka pun there, but I couldn't think of one. Um, so we're going to roll our next two into one mega review. We're going to do the, the quintessential look at Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Mm. Um, as they're the same, Matt, would you like to say what is the plot for these? Oh, the plot is... Um, so there's a big old chocolate factory um by owned by wonka willy wonka and um <laughs> he 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 says on i don't know how it's announced but he says basically um there's going to be five golden tickets placed into random wonka bars and around the world and so five lucky people will get a golden ticket and they'll get to be go to go inside his factory and his factory is a big secret no one knows what's inside nobody goes in and nobody ever comes out um but yet somehow thousands of people must be working there because they're making loads of chocolate mm. um, and so this is like a big deal people really want to go there because people love chocolate um, and so uh, yeah <laughs> five kids get it get the chance to they get the golden tickets and they get a chance to see the factory but what's inside the factory ooh mm. chocolate it's just lots of chocolate yeah yeah great and yeah like, so I thought it was pretty good yeah. what did you rate it <laughs> <laughs> Um, before we oh, start, this let's is, just say... This is where we're going to kick off. Right, right. this is about to be wait. a big... We should have had, like, a judge here so we could have, like, a proper, like, courtroom thing. An adjudicator. And we'd, yeah, because it'd be quite cool if we had, like, a sort of... Um, well, whatever. Um, so, <laughs> we have two very different opinions because Joshua strongly believes that Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory from 1971 is the superior film. And I strongly As the same believe... people do. Well, I strongly believe... That the 2005 film um, is better. Uh, so let's just see where, if any of our opinions change by the end. Yeah, let's break it down. I feel like the most interesting way of doing it is is we'll bring up a point and then we'll argue either side. Okay, I feel like that's an interesting way of doing it. Well, shall we start with the opening then? Because they both start with opening titles yes. with like chocolate being made. Yes. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is just far superior. Hate it. I hate How? it so much. So, right, so, I hate it. So the music is like creepy right off the bat. Hate the music. It's hate great. It. I love the Wrong. music in this film. It's so good. It's Danny Elfman, <laughs> I'm assuming, right? It, I just looked yes. it. it is Danny Elfman. Wrong. Of course it is. Bad. Listen to it. It's great. So right off the bat, I think it gives you such a sense of tone. Whereas I think there's like minor whimsy is all I get from the Willy Wonka score. I mean, I think some of the what? songs are good, but the incidental music is dreadful. What you get tone nothing out does, of it. does the intro from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory give you? It's like creepy, but also mysterious. And also like, I'm intrigued by this and it's like magical, but like, this is also kind of like dark and like creepy and like something fucked up about to happen. But right you don't get that from Willy Wonka. Tim Burton, what a bad choice to I make I disagree this film. because his, his films are like the bridge between like cartoon and reality. And that's what you need from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Because the characters are but cartoon characters, but it's live action. Not any cartoon. A specific type of horror cartoon. Yeah. Not a, a whimsy, yeah, whimsical but... child's fun... Willy Wonka is a horror film. There's, they all get killed. That's a modern... All right, that's some modern internet meme. Yes, that but it's like... You never see... Yeah, a reinterpretation of... Tonally in the film, it is not a scary film. And it is. It is the, in the boat scene. It's that, meant to yeah. be like slightly uneasy. Uneasy. Okay, I would give you that. Mysterious. Uneasy. Not like horrific. Factory. It's all dark. Uh, it's the not music dark. is it's is colourful. scary. Yeah. Um, it's just so detached from everything. Whereas you get the no, opening of but... of Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory, and you get actual footage from an actual factory. It's boring. Making actual chocolate. That's so boring. I don't want no. Willy Wonka's factory to just be an ordinary factory. And, yeah, in terms of, like, you saying um, how it's all scary in the Tim Burton one, the, the Willy Wonka, the, the original one, is they spend the whole time, like, the, the parents are always like, oh, we have to leave, this is really bad, we need to leave, this is terrible. But then we don't get 
we don't feel that. We're just told, like, oh, this is a really bad place. I don't want my children in. I, I In the Charlie and Chocolate Factory, you see, like, oh, my God, get your kids out of there. And I love that. I mean, you see kids die in the the first one as well. Yeah, Augustus Gloop <laughs> gets, gets, um, gets smashed to pieces immediately. But, like, <laughs> but it, it doesn't feel creepy. And I think it needs to. You need to feel like you're in danger. Like, every child is in danger. But then that's not the point of the story. Yeah, it is. No, it's not. It's not to feel no, because like it's also, you don't watch, it's also you don't watch wonderful. the film and go, I I want to watch a film where I feel frightened. No, so I think I think <laughs> if you're a good kid, you've got nothing to worry about. Like Charlie isn't scared because he only sees the wonder and all the different like um the crazy little inventions and the the wonderful fantasy world. He's never felt scared at any point. Whereas like the little shit kids um are terrified because they they don't care about the the joy and the wonder of it. They only care about um, how weird it is, and they're looking like, like, oh, this is weird, this is gross, and but we—that's bad for children. Children shouldn't think things are weird. Children should think <laughs> yeah, the things kids are aren't good. scared though. <laughs> the kids are terrified. The kids are never scared. No, they're not. No, they're not terrified. The but parents are frightened. Yeah, the, okay, the parents are terrified, but the children are just like, oh, this is weird. This is, and then they deserve to die. Because that they're... is from yeah, from the Charlies one, they are. But I think. Let's let's talk about Charlie. So Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory yeah. uh, starts with Charlie going about his day to day, and you get these very lovely vignettes when this Wonka fever kicks off. So you've got like a supercomputer guy trying to figure out where the the chocolate is. You've got this really interesting, almost like noir scene. Oh God, of, no, it's of not. A, a, a kidnapped husband and the detective's like that's funny. all he wants is your is your box of chocolates i will admit like, how all long of those, do i have to figure that out all of those scenes are funny um it's great yeah it gives you such a such an understanding and like we mentioned before it's from charlie's point of view but so it's not this, charlie's this barely not, in it it's this not may not it is be not factual, charlie is barely true, in the first film but he lives in a a poor house but it's like a a normal looking poor house he lives Which in the boring. real world yeah, but that's boring. and he is obsessed with winning this chocolate so it makes sense that everyone around him is also obsessed with finding yeah. these tickets i like he the therapist bit. has more of a character in this than he does in charlie you're delusional he charlie has... has no personality <laughs> in the original one he is a in nothing. charlie and chocolate factory he is a plank of wood he doesn't do anything no no at least the one Philip in willy wonka Moore, laughs Moore, and smiles him? And get scared Freddie by the likeable. fan. No, Freddie Highmore no is a, a likable screen presence, and I think the other kid is just nothing to me. His hair is so stupid. I mean, I don't think Freddie Highmore's <laughs> bowl cut's great, but what is his trim is so dead in the original, and he's just <laughs> he's nothing, and he he's not in any of the scenes. So right, I agree, they're great scenes. All of the little vignettes of like Wonka Fever, all really funny, but. Charlie has nothing to do with them. There's so many like, it, it, there's too many irrelevant characters in the original. That's that's world building, which the world building they, in Charlie they and the don't Chocolate build Factory the characters is, who it's matter. A horrible, just rank world. It's it's absurd. No, it's only where Charlie lives. And I think it takes away from the absurdity of the factory. If the whole world is weird and bizarre, then why would they be amazed I by think, this factory? I think the opposite. See, I think the problem with the original is that there's the the best songs are at the start before you enter the, the factory i agree you should definitely have a contrast between like a mm. uh normal outside world or in the new version like a shit outside world and like the wonderful women's school factory but it means that the mu I, I get that that i don't think that works for me in the original because of the music so you have like you know um the candy man right off the bat and you have um, I've got golden ticket, and there's that shit one about cheer up Charlie, or whatever that one sucks. Um, <laughs> and then, like th th that's that's all great. And then we get to the factory, and there's pure magic nation at the start, sure enough. But then you have just umpa lumpa, and that's trash. So I think your <laughs> criticism of like the world outside the factory is like just as whimsical. I think that's exactly the same problem with the original, but with the music. Talking about wasted characters and and who gives a shit moments. Why does the dad need a backstory about toothpaste? I like that. Who cares? Ca no. Don't waste my time. Um, Irrelevant. Actually, it's twenty I'll, minutes actually, longer. I'll tell you what, Don't I was care. thinking that that was to do that was linked with um, 
linked with Wonka, but actually, no, that's Grandpa Joe used to work for Wonka. Yeah, that is kind of yeah. irrelevant. Again, also I mean, don't care about that. Uh, yeah, he's building out of the toothpaste tubes the uh, factory just to show that he's, yeah. he loves Wonka. That could be done in better ways. But when it shows 20 years ago, um, the Grandpa Joe working at Wonka and then Wonka deciding to go a separate way and like get the umplumpers, that works really well for me. I think Grandpa I, again, Joe having the past experience works. I don't... I think it's less impactful that you see inside of the factory before Charlie goes in. I think that's a different factory. The only oh, time no, you not. see the factory in in Willy is when he's looking through the bars and he yeah. gets told no one goes in and no one goes out. And that's it. You see the yeah, lights come on from I, the name and it's, it's a mystery. You never see fair, Willy you... Wonka. You never see the factory. And so you are building anticipation in the same way that Charlie is, which you don't get in that... Charlie and Chocolate Factory. That's fair enough, and I agree. Like I like how when they're about to go in, and you open, when you see through the door, you see like a wall and a painting, and that's it. So even you really don't see anything. But mm. I think in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, you first of all you only see one one small room inside the factory, and <laughs> I assume it's totally totally different to when Grandpa Joe worked there. Mm. And actually, I'm. What I'm playing the film in the background now, and it's a different factory, Joshua. <laughs> so it doesn't matter uh, for me. For me, I still think it, it takes away uh, completely. Um, let's talk about the big man himself. Oh, Gene Wilder's far superior. Yeah, I'll, I'll give that. Yes, one. I'll, I'll give that one to the 1971 film. Yeah, he's I, absolutely I hate how, brilliant. He carries yeah, the movie. Johnny Depp is is doing like a Michael Jackson impression. I don't mind Johnny um, Depp's one. I don't. I just don't like it. People don't all. like it a lot. That I mean, I get it because it's really weird, but it does work. Like a man me. child is just. I hate. It's it's like all Will Ferrell things. Oh, I can't. They're stand just. Will Ferrell. They're not endearing. Um, and I, I touched on it earlier. I think Willy Wonka should be this eccentric, brilliant man who has kind of gone a bit stir crazy because he's been locked inside of his factory for who knows how long, twenty years. Um, so of course he's going to be a bit bizarre and a bit weird and that leads into kind of the the brilliance and the amazement of the character from charlie's point of view but just being an ungodly freak like um johnny depp is such like a jared leto performance before jared leto you don't want to be there you don't like the character you you don't want to know more about him but you're forced to know more about him it just but i think because gene wilder is so brilliant um, when I was watching it again this morning, every time I watched it before, I think he is. I think the rest of the cast is like some of them are okay. Veruca Salt's very good, but like most of them suck. And so in the first half mm. of the movie, when he's not in it, it you really feel it. I feel like it, <laughs> you do. Like when he you arrives, do. it's like you are only drawn to him, and almost like barely anyone else has. He just mm. like absorbs all of the charisma. Anything worth watching in the screen is him. And so you and you might as well not have the rest of the cast there. He could do it as a one-man show. He could. A, a horrible one-man show, but he could. I think they're great. I think they, I they think, fit I their roles I think both Veruca Salt great. are equally cunty, so they're fine. <laughs> but Well, before we get on to the, to the kids, um, what about the old Christopher Lee stuff? I mean, it was always the stuff I cared about the least. Mm. Great to see Christopher um, Lee. But Love I him. Yeah, I, I don't mind him having a backstory, really, though. It's a different interpretation of it, and I, although I probably do prefer the original interpretation, I don't mind this. I, I think as a backstory, it makes sense, like how he could never have sweets and that, and his dad was like a dentist, so he's sort of doing this to rebel. I think it links into and not I, seeing the factory. You take away from the weirdness of this character. It's like having a Darth Vader film. But, I mean, he's going to become instantly less cool. Because you spend more time with him, and you have to learn learn more about the character, yeah, but, and you take away some of that um, mystique. Well, I hate to break it to you, but there's there's quite a lot of Star Wars films where you see him before. Um, yeah, he exactly, Darth and Vader. it is is infinitely less cool than like the twelve minutes he's in uh, A New Hope. I know, but I still feel like you need some reason to to care and be invested. And you have a reason in Gene Wilder's one that he closed the doors because of these spies and so sets up a yeah. way to get an heir and that's that's his motivation for doing no, it all. I think that it's not just best. I want kids to I come in. I agree that works best. Yeah. Whereas this, it's a similar thing. He's getting older, he wants an heir but you don't need to add in 
oh, I'm, I'm also a man child and I miss my dad and um, I'm doing this all because I, I'm doing it despite him, but I need to go back and see him at the end with Charlie as well. Like, get rid of it. I mean, that does at least give a reason for the Great Glass Elevator because in the original, the original ends so abruptly and when they, they go into an elevator and they're flying across the clouds, it's kind of like, I don't really know why this is happening. Because when he's saying about how the factory is yours, I think it would be more effective if he's in the factory. It's like the Lion King. Everything below you is yours, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's not because he they fly like out of the town. <laughs> they just fly over the fields at the end. The kids in this, other than being allegories for um, sins, deadly sins. Oh yeah, I guess um, they are. Well, greed, greed wrath, Mike TV, lust? and you've got pride. Yeah. As envy Violet. is. No, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Prize Violet, Envy is uh, Veruca, and um, Greed for yeah, yeah. for the other gal. That's also Gluttony, isn't it? What's Greed? Wait, oh yeah, Greed mm. would be. But yeah, I was thinking Envy because all she ever yeah, wants yeah. and everything. But yeah, that'd be Greed. Um, yeah. Mike TV drops the R word in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Did you pick up on that? <laughs> I didn't pick up on that, but that doesn't surprise in his me. It's introduction. I'm pretty sure he says says the R word. So that's great. <laughs> he probably does. Yeah. You know what, Mike TV is great, and I, I, they had very different interpretations, but I think they did a, a good job in the new one, how they sort of changed it to sort of a new generation of mm. sort of TV watchers. Like, he's more of a gamer, yeah. um, he's getting those whereas he's like obsessed with hours, like westerns yeah. in the original. Yeah, so I, I think I think it worked, because if they did the western thing, like, in the 21st century film, mm. it just wouldn't would make sense so they're two two different yep. films and i think both actors do a really good job of it. something i'm gonna bring up that i'm sure you're gonna hate mm-hmm. slugsworth he's yeah. always there isn't he he's always around how does he know who's gonna win the ticket is that a plot hole that's a good um not really i because, don't think so either uh because the news crew managed to have time to get there like they didn't but he's even there, he's not there in the, the factory the t- when, the, Charlie, when the ticket is won there, though. for veruca isn't he in in willy wonka in the chocolate factory I don't remember. Ver- I don't remember him seeing Veruca. He's there when the tickets won, and he ushers the the ladies. Maybe they've up. got like trackers. That's the thing. Actually, no. In the original, that's the thing. Is it's the past? They wouldn't have. Trackers I think on them. the implication is for me. I think it's very clever. He he that, chose the kids. That it's all planned. Who they're going to? These tickets. So he just planned to murder the other four. He just wanted to kill the four worst kids and choose potentially one. Potentially, child I think that's it. for me. That's the implication that. That he knew where the yeah. chocolates were going and knew kind of wanted to test them. So he tests them all in their own little way. And if Augustus didn't fall so into did the chocolate... So did he genuinely think that... Did he genuinely think the other four could have stood a chance? Yeah, I don't see why not. If if we're going with, like, the sin... Veruca Salt's a right bitch. There's no way she would but, have well, been a good choice. That's why she died and you never see her again. <laughs> she did die. Because I, I didn't really pick up on that. I was just thinking, because obviously Augustus Gloop and Mike TV, he's there, like, when the news is, like, interviewing him. Yeah. So he sort of had time. But, like, he stops Charlie in an alley. I being when, in the factory. And Charlie has just yeah, won Yeah, he it. does. That is definitely... Yeah, but Charlie Charlie lives right next to the factory, doesn't he? Yeah. He definitely does in the in the new one. Yeah, or even they know which boxes the, the tickets are in. So they, like, just send it out and yeah, follow the, the, the box kind of thing. So they're always yeah. there to give the... I'll give you this 10 grand if you give me that gobstopper. Like, there's always that little test at the end. Mm. Um, there weren't any songs in Charlie, were there, other than the Oompa Loompa songs? No. I hated them. But it, it, <laughs> Oh, I think they're all great. But they're they're from the book. I mean, they're just exactly the word for word how they I, are in the book. I hate the mixing and of I the think songs. It, you I, cannot understand what they're, they're saying. And I understand they're trying to get like the yeah. highs and the lows like they did in Willy, Willy Wonka... Um, but the first song ha- has lyrics on, so even if you find it hard to follow, does it? Yeah, the the Oompa Loompa one. But the others, the others don't. don't. Um, but in Charlie and Chocolate Factory, because they are so differently pitched all over the place, like indecipherable what they're singing most of the time. Because I, I I always I never had an issue understanding them in the 2005 one because I was a huge fan of the book and so I knew uh, them anyway. I knew the words anyway, and I watched the film a lot. And I just, I just knew. But then in, um, basically, my school we did like it's called Nice Deadford, and it's what? like, uh, it's a Welsh word. It's a, it's a Welsh word. It's like a, a, a variety show thing, okay. basically. And so you do like, um, it's a big evening in the year, and the school gets like really into it, and it's you do like, um, 
uh, each is into house. So there's three houses and you have like a choir performance from each house and like um, a soloist from every mm-hmm. house and dance thing. And you have a drama performance. And so the drama thing, they take a play, they basically thin it down as short as it can, split it into three <laughs> and each team does each house does that and so i was in a bunch of years and the year i directed them they were like these are too long we'll just do one scene from each Mm. for each poem so i had to direct the veruca salt scene oh um josh had to direct the um josh harper uh yeah because we were the three me josh and alistair were the three drama i wondered what the uh what the tensions were between the three of you that i understand now yeah okay (laughs) so we were the three (laughs) drama captains so um Josh had, I think it was the Mike TV scene. I've got it all somewhere. But then Alistair had the Violet Beauregard scene. Um, so we all had to like direct them. And we all rewatched the films then. And everyone was saying, like, they couldn't understand a word that the Olympus was saying. And I didn't realise that until the time. And I was like, yeah, that's true. But I will say, all of us rewatched both films. And we came to the consensus that the new one's better. It's certainly more book accurate. And we the book is we... great. We... Spoke about it, was it last episode? No, the Hunger Games one. Um, I just, I don't think something being book accurate is relevant when you're talking about a film. Not necessarily, no. But I think the book is better. I Yeah, I agree. So I remember reading it when I was really, really young. Um, yeah. But it's, it's like we spoke about the Oompa Loompas. I, I didn't remember them being that small, but they must have been because they were in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and Wonka. But I think that that leads into uh, kind of another big issue I have with Charlie. Willy Wonka is so, so much more magical. And you may think, well, it's it's like a much smaller scale and um, it, it looks a lot worse in terms of even like the first room you go into compared to Charlie and Chocolate Factory. But because it's all real, it's all sets, the Oompa Loompas are played by real actors, that it's just tangible and doesn't feel silly. But Child in the Chocolate Factory, yeah. it's just way too far. You don't believe it. It's it's not like in in Willy where you can step in and you feel like you're there because you could be there. You've got that uncanny valley feel that takes away from like the first room from the Oompa Loompas in Charlie that I just I find it hard to get over. Oh, but the real sets look shit. Don't they? <laughs> yeah, but but they're real. Imagine the, all the time the, that they the, spent the doing f- that. The the amazing art team. <laughs> Uh, Roald Dahl even said when he saw the film that he it looked terrible, and I don't want to eat anything in the original <laughs> film. the The chocolate river looks so unappealing. All the chocolate is like a really gross color. It's like almost like pink and like really pale and watery. And when you compare the two like scenes, yeah, there's a lot of CGI and the CGI doesn't really hold up. But I think it's so much more appealing in the in the 2005 one. The chocolate river looks delicious. All of the like plants that are made of sweets look delicious. But it looks dated. It all looks horrible in the original. The the seventy one one looks, it looks dated. Timeless. It looks, it <laughs> looks so not timeless. It looks, it's so so dated. I mean, honestly, it looks, it's really bad. What about when he sticks it looks sticks gross. that mushroom on his cane and it becomes an umbrella? <laughs> it's all right. I mean, I like the bit where he like takes the flower and then he uses it as a tea, yeah, that's, that's teacup and then he, eat, then he eats it. That's quite fun. Um. But it's like the the giant balls. They're meant to be like sweets or they're meant, something. They are just inflatables. Oh yeah, they of look course. Terrible. I I didn't and know until it's just so small. <laughs> yeah, but they actually made it. That's the difference. And but you, they made a huge set it's for like, the new one. It's not it's all like CGI. It's like the difference between a new hope. It's still a humongous to Phantom set. Menace. Uh, I'd say more Attack of the Clones because Phantom Menace is a lot more. There's not as much CG. I mean, obviously the whole battle against Gungans versus <laughs> droids is CG, but like. It's still a lot of practical stuff. I didn't know until the credits that uh, Willy Wonka was written by Roald Dahl, screenplay. Yeah, and then he hated the film. Yeah, but he can be wrong. He was also very racist, so he can be wrong about other things as well. Yeah, <laughs> what do you think about the Oompa Loompas between the two? Because I feel like you're going to hate Deep Roy's Oompa yep. Loompas, but I much prefer them. I think the orange face green ones, very iconic. They look stupid. But they're played by and real they... people. And that's what I hate about Wonka. Deep Roy is a real yeah, person. But it's hard I do... because as as a little person, especially think... a, an actor in this industry, you it's got to be so hard to find roles um, that when a film like this comes up, you're, you're just taking like free work from these people. And it's such a shame 
Yeah, no, I agree with that. No, Hugh Grant oh, shouldn't have should been. Oh, should not have been. Yeah, but Deep Roy is... Deep Roy's a little person. They just make him even more. I little. liked the the but interpretation I think, of I that. Like I thought he's... it was great. I thought he was like, I could buy him as like a weird little fella, a hundred percent. Yeah, exactly. I think I thought he's excellent. But I would much rather have had same issue with uh, the CGI. Have just real people. Have tangible people doing it, and you don't have to worry about it. Gene Wilder's great though. Like with that bit where um, he does it for both um, Augustus Gloop and Violet Beauregard. How um, when they're like dying, he's like. Stop! Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, please That's don't. Great. <laughs> yeah. Um, the only yeah, other pretty. thing I have to say, really, about the 2005 one, um, did you catch mm. the little Kevin Eldon and Mark Heap bit? Well, I have, as you know, I haven't actually rewatched it, so I didn't recognise Kevin Eldon, but I do know that Mark Heap's with a. He's a. I remember he's like got a dog just in the walked street. past the factory. Him and Kevin Eldon walking with a, a two very camp oh, with dogs. Kevin with great. Mm. <laughs> We, I've worked with both of them. Uh, I haven't. I've only worked with one. Uh, I didn't, don't think I ever spoke to Kevin Eldon. I stood in for him, but I don't think I ever spoke to him. It's only a short scene, isn't it? Mark Heap. Yeah. Mark Heap is a very strange man, but I like him. Uh, Grandpa Joe, so much better in the new one. I don't like the older Grandpa Joe. I do, I do like him at one <laughs> bit. I like him when he's he's uh, like, she's a nipwit, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> but I don't like... The bit I don't like about the original is when they like sneak off and they do the um the like floating thing with the mm. bubbles. Um because it means that they he's like just as naughty and bad as the other kids. Like he needs to stand out. And the fact Grandpa Joe is just as villainous and, and Charlie's just as well, like Well that's it. Grandpa Joe tells him to do it, doesn't he? Yeah. And yeah, they ha- obviously have that like bit at the end where Willy Wonka acknowledges that he broke the rules yeah, and did that which and then doesn't happen has a in change Charlie. of heart basically out of nowhere. Yeah, but the cha- I don't buy his like complete like swap and change of heart. And it would have been funny if they farted rather than burping, but whatever. <laughs> but that's because it's a bit bizarre, something that you might not have picked up on on 2005. Um, Charlie actually mm. has a bit of a character in this. <laughs> no, he doesn't. He doesn't have a character Charlie, at all. Charlie has a bit of... Um, He's the most boring child. He has a bit of drive, a bit of action of his own. Like, for example, no, leaving the gobstopper behind because he doesn't want to betray Willie even after being shunned, yeah. which doesn't happen in Charlie yeah, the right. Factory because he's but, just nothing. He doesn't impact the story at all. Char- yeah, he does. Charlie in, in the original is like, he, um, you know when he, he gets the winning bar of chocolate that gets the um, has the golden mm. ticket in? He says, yeah, I'm going to get this for my, my granddad, my grandpa. And then he gets the ticket out and he just chucks it on the floor. He just chucks the chocolate on the floor and he never gives it to his granddad. Because he's got, he just, he he's got a lifetime supply of chocolate now. He just cares about now. the ticket he himself. It. Yeah, but not immediately. <laughs> he's poor. Give his family some food. <laughs> Have a cabbage soup. And he's just soup. complaining Come about... On. He's complaining about cabbage soup. Freddie Highmore is like... He's so... Lo- what a lovely, wholesome child who, like... He loves and respects his family. And he knows his parents are trying as hard as they can. And he's, you know... Maybe, like... Although it's like... You say it's not that important. Like, yeah, we get to see his dad's job. And we see that he's trying all he can. He, he's not, like, unemployed in a layabout. Like, you know, he's got he's working in a factory. He's working hard. He just can't make ends meet because of this capitalist world. As, as um, children famously are known for, being very appreciative of eating cabbage soup every day. Like a normal child, that is. But he's not meant to be a normal child. He's meant to be a good boy. And so the <laughs> message of it is you're like, I need to be the most well-behaved, lovely boy ever so that... I will get a chocolate factory when I'm older. <laughs> I don't know. I'm mu- I I like Freddie Highmore's for, um, Charlie so much more. What did you review the two films? And let's see how different we were. I reviewed the original yep. film as three and a half stars because I think it is good. But I think um, when Gene Wilder isn't in it, it really shows. Okay. And I think there's a lot of like... I, I think they almost have to use all those comic actors... Uh, in the first half, like all just people who are in like one scene at a time, literally just to to fill the fact that he's not in it because the rest of the ensemble can't carry it. Okay, but it's good and it's just dated. I think the chocolate looks terrible. I think the the factory like some of it looks decent, but like it, it's it doesn't look. Roy Kinnear is great though. Roy Kinnear is brilliant. Yeah, he is, and he looks like Roy Kinnear. That's really weird. I do wonder why. I know, it's, fuck it, it's so weird how like his name is that one letter different and he looks like it. I know, same last name. But I don't he know can't what be it the same. Been. But he can't be the same guy because like, yeah. they're like a generation apart. I, so. I could not think of any other link a really other than being coincidence. the same person. So that's really weird. Yeah. Um, and what did but you... he can't be the same person. So it's, yeah. Yeah, really it's a coincidence. weird coincidence. Yeah. 
Yeah. And what did you rate, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? I haven't rewatched it, but I think like four and a half stars. I I love it. I think you were on some sort of schnoz schnoz nuts right here. <laughs> I just love Wonka. <laughs> I just love. I've just been eating all of my lovely treats. I gave Charlie and the Chocolate Factory two stars. I Lunatic. I hate the freak of a man Johnny Depp plays. I think it it well that's what I'd mark it down for. No, maybe I give it four, but I'd mark it down on on yeah that stuff. It's like a weird SNL parody of the original, and I don't think it works at all. Um, I think it's it's insincere I and doesn't love, have the childlike love... wonder that the first one has. Yeah, I think it. I think it really does. As a child, I wondered. Boy, did I wonder <laughs> watching it because I think the factory is so much more interesting as a kid. Like you look at the as a kid, like we grew up, you know, two thousand five. We were six when when it came out. I. We looked at the original because I grew up with them both. Like I watched the original, and was like, "This factory looks trash. This looks so dated." <laughs> and then you look at the the 2005 one. It's like, "Whoa, this is a huge place. There's all this like crazy shit around. Like I want to eat all of these things." Yeah, I don't know. Like for the for child wonder, the 2005 one is way better. It's because you're always on TikTok these days, so nothing impresses you. I don't. And no, it doesn't. Uh, Willy Wonka, I gave five stars. Perfect film. It's not perfect. It's got so many flaws. Perfect film. Loads. Everyone seems to give it like four and a half or five, and I just don't get much appeal. I don't think it's very magical. Like I don't think the score, apart from the songs, the incidental music, there's no score to it. The colors are gross. I think it, it needs color grading, man. I mean, I don't know anything about film stock, but I just think it needs to be way more vibrant and rich, and it just looks. It was actually with uh, Technicolor. Meh. This is a Technicolor film. Yeah, I know it's Technicolor. I know, but everything's Technicolor. I doesn't narrow it down. Well, there you have it, everyone. Um, the poll today is going to be which is better. So, well, you're going to win, you're, but I'm right. If you're listening, please and um, don't don't listen to either of us. Put your favourite one down, and whoever wins between me and Matt is just clearly the better filmmaker. We win a okay? bar of chocolate. We <laughs> we win a, a galaxy, each of us. Uh, now on to filmmaking lessons. Oh, you you go ahead. <laughs> the score does everything for a film. Yeah, that's why the second one's better. That's why the second one is trash. <laughs> <laughs> no, I tell you what, the score is... There's good parts of both of them. The incidental music's better in the newer one. The the actual, like, song songs is better in the previous one. I think the biggest takeaway from all three of these, really, are just what a good art director does for you like the set yeah. just creating that level of whimsy whether it was Wonka's shop in the new one or the first room in the factory that you get into the edible room uh, yeah. it just it, it's amazing um, and really sells it it's one of those things that kind of Star Wars always falls back on is this great um, world building this great world design um, and that's why it's very important it is yeah it is and I do think on all three films they did a pretty good job with what they could would you have um, taken any of this and and changed how you made the elf film if you had uh, an art designer and a budget would you take anything? oh the elf film would look incredible if it had a budget yeah oh yeah i definitely have a but the whole thing with that is it looks like bland because the basically the elf film which i'm making is um the the film is we've now come up with a title and uh it might change before uh, it comes out in like a <laughs> week's really time good but though, i i like it so i think i'll stick with it but it's called The Elf Who's Making Your Toys is on nine pounds an hour and hates his job. Um, <laughs> and so that's basically what it's about. It's it's you know, back in the day it was it was a factory like Willy Wonka's, you know, it was um the elves were making the uh, toys for children for Christmas. It, they were making hand making them and um it, it was like how you imagine it. And then nowadays kids don't have handmade toys, they don't have nutcrackers and like handmade dolls. They have Barbies and they have Lego and they have Transformers. And so the elves just sit in in offices ordering them on Amazon. And in the warehouse they just get them out of the Amazon box and rewrap them <laughs> and then send them off. And that's what it's about. It's about the um modern day twenty first century elves who are now just it's just a job. Um, and it's it's very similar to jobs that we'd have in in our world, um, and it's a bit of a comedy. Uh, I think it's quite good. I'm looking forward to people seeing seeing it. I'm very excited to see it. Uh, but yeah, no. If if that were made into like a TV show, we would we would have all these sorts of Wonka like sets, mm. and they'd all be shut down, and then they, they'd be working in a boring office. Yeah, almost like the the subversion of this. 
that you, yeah, you yeah. see them and well, they're that's just exactly derelicts. Yeah. Because yeah. when, when kids think about like the elves making the toys, mm. they, they, I mean, I always imagine something like this. Yeah. And so, yeah, no, definitely. My film is deliberately not this, but also partly because I have no money. <laughs> so it's filmed in my dad's office. <laughs> oh, money. Do you remember money? Have you ever had money? No. no. Neither have I. Actually, Neither no. Have I. No. For, for now, I'm happy with chocolate. <laughs> I'm happy you played in Cocoa Beans. You ready for the next segment? Okay, what's the next segment? It's Cursed Double Features, but I quickly need to think of some. Oh my god, I don't have any for one cut. Now onto our famed segment. Um, we get so many comments about it. Um, it's, we've also been tapped up to sell the segment because it's so famous. But we've said yeah. we don't want the money, we do it for the love of the craft. A Cursed I Double Features. People... I wish the audience would like send us their cursed double features. Audience, too, this is to you. This is my favourite section of our podcast, and I think people should get involved because then we can read them out. But no one ever does. Come on, audience! Please send something through. We're on, as of this recording, we're on ninety-nine out of a hundred listeners. Um, so if you have a cursed double feature, just do it. Just send it over. Why not? What are you going to lose? You think Matt's going to make fun of you? Maybe. Yeah. And we've only got one more listener. Then the podcast gets deleted. <laughs> so. <laughs> This one person, listen up. <laughs> right. So, right. what have you got for Wonka? Okay, for Wonka, I've got Call Me By Your Name. Because <laughs> Timothy Chalamet's Willy loves the way that food <laughs> makes him feel. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That is a really good one. That's, that's better than all of mine. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, I only just came up with it. I was very proud of it. You started strong there. You stitched us right up. What do you have for Wonka? I have uh, a very easy one. Uh, Wonka and Old Boy, just because of the visuals, the cinematography, very similar. Yeah. I think they're very thematically the same as well. Uh, oh, yeah, definitely. And I've also yeah. got um, a Wonka and The Shape of Water, um, which both feature mm -hmm. Sally Hawkins having a very deep relationship while in or around water. So the, the barge with Timmy C. Very true. And sex with a fish. <laughs> <laughs> In a bathtub. <laughs> what about uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? Willy Wonka. I've got not a funny one, but I've got Snowpiercer. Have you seen that YouTube video on the theory that Snowpiercer is a sequel to Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? No. Oh, it's really interesting. Like, there's um, there's like parallels with the characters. Like, I think is it Will, but the main guy. I think he's meant to be Charlie, not Willy Wonka. But like, how you know the machinery at the, uh, the front of it needs to be like powered by children because it's small, almost as if it was meant for Oompa Loompas. There's loads <laughs> and loads of parallels. It's really cleverly done, um, and I can't really remember a lot of it. But watch that video, link in the description, and there we go. Oh, I'll have to have uh, a look. Good film, Snowpiercer. And I've also got Return of the Jedi. Because a beloved children's character um, canonically grows out one of their nails to snort cocaine <laughs> out of it. Because <laughs> he got Grandpa Joe with his coat nail. I was waiting and, for that um, to come. <laughs> and Princess Leia as well. <laughs> Great. I love um, that. My, my final one is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Because children are selected to take part in a once-in-a-lifetime experience that everybody dreams of, but it's super dangerous and involves a large golden egg, <laughs> singing fantasy creatures, and at least one of them dying. <laughs> um, I had uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory and the Gene Wilder film Silver Streak. Um, mm -hmm. So both feature in Gene Wilder and both feature actors putting face paint on um, for different means. So whether that's the Oompa <laughs> Loompas having orange face paint or Gene Wilder famously doing blackface. Uh, <laughs> not very good great <laughs> what about that's fun. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory I, they're all the same okay Willy Wonka and Charlie I just have, they're the same I did Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and Sweeney Todd which both have Johnny Depp characters just murdering people just left right and centre that's true no but he doesn't murder them in, in, in Charlie like you see that scene of like them alive and well afterwards yeah but I think I think in some in some respects he probably whacked, yeah. had him whacked afterwards and so didn't spill the secrets. <laughs> That's when he got Slugworth in to do it. Yeah. Um, and I had Charlie and Pee Wee's Big Adventure, which are both Tim Burton directed films, uh, featuring just a bizarre man child and a weird host of characters that surround them. Very nice. Very nice. So on to comments and our short film for this week. Um, let's have a look at the comments we have. So we have done, although a bit sporadically. Um, for our, our bonus episodes for the past three weeks, we have looked at the 60th anniversary of Doctor Who. Uh, and on our most recent one, uh, does the ironic racism in the giggle go too far? 
we have a comment from uh, oh at K Mormon two thousand and eight. Uh, interesting discussion, but I think you've slightly misunderstood the accents thing. The way the oh, doctor great. defeated the toy maker the first time back in the nineteen sixties was by copying mm. his voice. Therefore, Spoilers. in canon, the reason why the toy maker uses German, French, and English, and briefly American uh, accents, is to allow this not to happen again. The only part which was added to the show was the continued racism of the character was a jibe at Charles. I don't know who Charles is. The king, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who Charles is. Um, I I think that's his head canon. I'm not sure the toy maker did speak in different accents because he's right that that's how it's feet. I don't... No, I don't think that's why it is. Interesting. I... And, but if it is, fair enough. I mean, if I don't yeah. think that really goes against what we were saying. We were saying that... That it was racist. <laughs> it was just... It was, yeah, and it was also like... He could have just talked in less German and a bit more of a mixture, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I um, I did slag you Thank off you the in comment. the comments. I replied and said, yeah, Matt was wrong. Um, just because I want to try and build up an audience, so that, that does involve slagging well, us off. That's fair enough. And, I, you know, even if I don't agree, let's just... I'll pretend to apologise and then he'll be like, well, then a couple of nice chaps. They admit when they're wrong and I'm right, and so I'll subscribe. Did he subscribe? Has our subscriber account gone up? Uh, I don't know, but if you're listening, sir, please subscribe. It hasn't. You can fuck off. <laughs> He's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's it for our, our comments. Do leave any uh, cursible features below from this week or any thoughts. If you do think Matt's right, um, I don't want you listening to the podcast. Uh, so oh. go away. I, I want to live well, with the consensus. Well, I can actually move on with my life if... <laughs> Not everyone agrees with me about my film opinions. I can't. I'll just watch other films. If I'm not right, because... I don't want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> because at the end of the day, like, you know, they're fun movies, but I don't base my life around Willy Wonka. I base it around Wallace and Gromit <laughs> and Doctor Who. So it's fine. Um, if you don't like Wallace and Gromit, then <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> you could not like Doctor Who. That's perfectly understandable, to be honest. <laughs> So we're a lot less tired this week, so we will be looking at a short. Um, we've had Are a we? submission uh, oh, from yeah, Alistair. Yeah. However, we thought this was more th- important to do. Not important. We thought this was more thematic yeah. to do. More relevant to what we've spoken about. So we'll be looking at Alistair's mm. next week. Thank you very much, sir. Um, I've just sent you the video, Matt. Would you like to watch it at the same time? It's only a minute long. Yeah, okay. Let's do it. So this is uh, a short film, not submitted by, but one that we have found, um, by Modded Controller 360. Earlier. So this is titled Red Tiger Xbox 360 Controller. It is a re-upload of Timothy Chalamet, a.k.a. Modded Controller 360's third and final YouTube video. Um, So I'm very interested to see what happens here. So this is probably Timothy Chalamet's first short film. This was the one that I watched earlier. Yeah. Okay, I'm ready to go when you are. Um, Um, Yeah, I guess it'd be his first. So if you want to watch along at home, we'll count you in. Three, two, one, play. I mean, right from the start, I can tell that he is such a good actor because I don't think his voice sounds very similar. He, he's really he's kind of playing the part of like a teenager who's, who's probably voice only just dropped. And so it sounds like even lower than it normally would, you know, and it's quite hoarse. It's great. I really like the framing as well. It's very confident for such a young filmmaker at this point. It's, it's one uh, setup. Uh, it's looking it's over this setup. modded controller you, you don't even see his face you don't which i think is great because normally like you know he his face is what sells that's what gets bums on mm. seats you know people are, like finding him hot so the fact that he can he can take his looks away and still give this performance great it's a physical I think performance it's really, isn't it a sign of a really powerful yeah a sign of a really powerful performance right he has to like, sell it in his, his can, hands his his chest his um his old man sweater is great and what humble guy, he's calling out a lot of his friends. He's, he's, he mentioned Stud Muff in there. Um, he mentioned a, yeah, different he couple, a different kind of modded controller as well. And it's mm. it's in and out. It's a minute. That's short and well, sweet. I mean, it's, it's, succe- it's a successful short because it had, I think, two sequels. This No, this was the third and final. So this was the, the, the end, end okay, of the trilogy. Because I've, yeah, I, I've seen um, one of the other pictures at least. It was. Um, they, they all follow a similar structure. They're very like mm. formulaic within mm. the genre, but I think that's what the audience comes to expect. Um, Especially but from the controllers, a different color. Yeah, I. Yeah. Did, do you know if this did well 
I might, it must have gone to Cannes and, and all of those. Do you know if, if this did well at any festivals? I think it was definitely nominated for the um, for the Academy Award short, but I don't know mm, if it won. Because mm. it was the third one. So by this point, it would have built up enough traction. Yeah, yeah. sequels don't tend to do that well, though. Mm. Unless it's a Godfather Part 2 or Lord of the Rings 3. I mean, this, I think, in an interview, I know, um, I don't know if you saw Timothy Chalamet and Martin Scorsese did a, an advert together. Um, yeah. Scorsese actually said that this was an inspiration for um, his most recent film. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah that he wanted, Killers of the Flower Moon. Yeah. That he wanted a more direct yeah. influence. Um, and that's why he got yeah. Timothy in. Actually, I never thought of it before, but I can, I can see a similarity between yeah. the two. I can certainly see the parallels being drawn. I mean, you see, you literally see Leonardo DiCaprio using a Red Tiger Xbox 360 controller at the start of the film. He does, yeah. Um, yeah. He knows Curtis Molly. <laughs> he does. she respawns and falls in love with him. He does. He, he 1v1s her on Rust. And because it's modded yeah. through this video, through this short film, that's how he wins. Mm. Yeah. Great. What a great submission. Thank wow. you, Timothy, for submitting this. I mean, it, this. Just, it just... yeah. We know you're out there listening. You... It really makes you wonder how, like, Chalamet and, like, Scorsese, like, can just... I don't know. It, it, you know, you, you try as hard as you can as a filmmaker, but just the fact that they can just so effortlessly... Yeah, see... I know. Shit out something like this. I know. Um, brilliant. And as a, Absolutely brilliant. As a podcast, um, we, we love you as an actor and as a director, Timothy. We hope you do get over your, your Victorian illness very soon. <laughs> We're all thinking of you. <laughs> and best of luck with um, with Wonka 2. Yeah. Wonka 2, Wonkin again. Wonka, Wonka 2, Wonkin all over <laughs> you. <laughs> That's the show. That's the show. Right, we can't go on too much longer because Alistair's going to come and pick up my mic in a minute because oh, he needs man. to take it to London oh, to man. record some narration for my short. <laughs> uh, that was great. That was a very long one. Our recording's coming to about two hours, so I have to see how much yeah, we can cut this down. Yeah, please cut down substantially. Exciting. Right. Thank you very much, Matt. I'll see you on the next one. Good day, sir. That's not how we end this. I say good day! <laughs> As you clip the go. microphone. Right. Yeah, no, definitely.